Hi, my name is Elise Noor, and I teach in Regis's English department and its Women's and Gender Studies department. I'm a founding member of the Query Resource Alliance, and I helped create the Brave Space training that you are now learning how to conduct yourself. So welcome to Brave Space's Train the Trainer. Um, this training is meant to help prepare you to lead Brave Space workshops across campus yourself. All you need to be qualified to lead a Brave Space training is to have attended a full three hour Brave Space training yourself and to watch this video and um, go through the material and contact us with any questions that you have. Um, after that, you are prepared and ready to lead a training yourself. Um, we uh, accept trainers from all across the university, students, faculty, and staff. You can be a member of the queer community or you can be an ally. All are welcome to lead Brave Space trainings. It's a great line on your resume if you're a student um, or graduate student. It's a great um, thing to do for your service work if you're faculty or staff. And it really does help make our community a safer, more inclusive space for LGBTQIA members. So from the bottom of my heart and on behalf of all of the Queer Resource Alliance, thank you for uh, attending this Train the Trainer um, and be being a part of our Brave Space training. We couldn't do it without the help of volunteers like yourself. So in this video tutorial, I'm going to walk you through the Brave Space curriculum and give you some tips and tricks on how to make the Brave Space training that you facilitate as successful as possible. If you have any questions at all, I encourage you to reach out to the Queer Resource Alliance. Um, you can contact the Brave Space email address, you can contact me, Elise Knorr, um, and you can contact any active members of the QRA with questions. Let's begin. Okay, so one of the ways that we try to make the Brave Space training extremely sustainable is that we spell out everything you need to know as a trainer in our Brave Space trainer packet. There's even a script for each activity of the training that you can read aloud if you like in this packet. And so it's really important to read it carefully, go over it in detail, and then I'll walk you through it um, with some extra tips here in this video. Um, but when you, when you sign up to lead a Brave Space training, you're going to have this packet. You're going to have a bucket full of materials and copies and um, all, of the, all of the stuff you need to lead the training. You don't need to do any of that prep work yourself. The training is designed to let you just show up and um, gather the materials and go and lead it on the spot. So I'm going to be walking you through the Brave Space Trainer packet that was most recently updated October 2019-2021. Um, so it was first updated in 2019 and then it was updated again in 2021. The first thing you'll see here is a thank you on behalf of the Queer Resource Alliance for taking the time to lead these trainings. Find a table of contents of all the activities and resources. And then you'll find some tips about your role as a trainer. We want to emphasize that your, uh, your role is not to be an expert on everything queer. Instead, your role is to be a guide and a conversation facilitator. So your role is to be an ally, a person in charge of maintaining the safety of the group, maintaining the, um, the flow of the space, keeping everyone moving for, through the activities on time and just guiding conversation. A lot of times we think that we should go in knowing everything and that we should act like a teacher, especially those of us who are teachers, but it's much better to ask questions, right? So you can give information, but also remember that you're there to facilitate conversation. And so asking questions is paramount. Sometimes stepping back helps even more than, um, than, than leaning in. We want to respect the opinions of all participants and know that they're coming in with all kinds of different um, beliefs and backgrounds um, and that we want to be respectful of those um, while also pushing them toward um, being more inclusive um, and just to our community. We want to keep clear and professional boundaries and outsource people if they need help. You can send people to the Office of Counseling and Personal Development um, if they seem to need that. Um, some of the reasons why someone might need to be referred to counseling include if they um, if they you know are no longer able to function in their in their work or classes, if they experience a drop in grades or academic performance, they say they can no longer cope with their day to day activities and responsibilities, exhibit major depressive symptoms, express suicidal thoughts or feelings, or say that they have no support. So, um, if any of your participants uh, mention that they're experiencing this then you'd want to refer them to the Office of Counseling and Personal Development. Okay. So again, some of those facilitation tips for a trainer include considering your audience, whether you're talking with students, um, a specifically queer group, um, 
it's university ministry, whether you're talking with a group of professors, that might give you an idea on how to um, guide what you're, what you're delivering. Try to be flexible and um, be aware of your audience's mood. If um, the audience is chatting or not paying attention, you might move on to a different activity. Um, or if the audience is deeply engaged in what you're doing, feel free to spend more time on it than you had planned. Um, make sure to keep the focus on the fact that this is a group activity discussion-based training and not a lecture-based training, and that it is 101 level. So it's here for people to learn the very basics about queer inclusivity. Um, you can start with show of hands type questions if you want to ease people into discussion. At the same time, don't be afraid of silence. Sometimes silence just means that we're thinking, and that's good. Try to ask one question at a time whenever possible, since asking multi-part questions can be confusing and intimidating. Ask follow-up questions, like if someone answers with a yes or a no, ask them for a reason. Avoid making general statements with us, we, or they. You don't have to become a spokesperson for the queer community, and in fact, you shouldn't. Give positive feedback when people share out. And again, don't feel like you have to know all the answers. If a question arises that you don't know the answer to, don't panic. Um, just mention that you're still educating yourself too, and that you will um, seek out the answer later. The Brave Space training is three hours long, and it breaks down as follows. Um, I find it helpful before every training to sort of write down what the times are. So for instance, if my training begins at one o'clock and it's going to end at four o'clock, then on a little scrap sheet of paper, I will write down one to one ten or one fifteen, welcome and community agreements. One fifteen to one thirty, exploring self privileges and biases. And I do that so that I can just look at my watch and look at my paper and not have to do math in my head the whole time about if I'm on time in the training. So the training might feel like it flies by and you might feel like you didn't get nearly enough time on an activity, but you have to force yourself to move on to keep us on time. Or it might feel like it's really dragging because people are tired or they're being quiet and that's fine too. So there is some wiggle room here, but we just want to make sure that everyone leaves on time after the three hours is over. Okay. So we start with a welcome statement. And um, at this point, you're, you're able to just start sharing welcome to the training. And you're going to introduce yourselves. The, the two uh, Brave Space co-leaders are going to introduce themselves, including their pronouns and identity labels. So I would say my name is Elise Knorr, and I identify as a cisgender lesbian woman, and I use she, her, hers pronouns. You can then read this script if you like, or you can kind of paraphrase it in your own words. We then, we then share the Regis University land acknowledgement statement. And then we have a little statement here about how this training comes out of our Jesuit mission. After you've shared all of this, you can invite the participants to introduce themselves by their name and preferred pronouns. Um, you can give them examples of pronouns, he, him, his, they, them, theirs, and explain that we use pronouns to make a space more inclusive for everyone. You can then invite your, pan your uh, participants to open up their packets and turn to the community agreements page. You can read the community agreements together and then ask if anyone has any comments or questions about the agreements or if anyone would like to add anything to the list. This is what the participants will see. They see these agreements here. You can um, read them out loud to the participants and then at the end ask them to um, add in any others that they'd like to add or emphasize any that they'd like to emphasize. Often I find that at this point in the training, uh, participants are very quiet because they're, they're still a little bit nervous or they're, they're not warmed up quite yet. So don't worry if you don't get any feedback after the community agreements. The next activity is the identity wheels, which we call exploring self privileges and biases. Purpose of this activity is to have participants reflect on and discuss the identities most important to them. So you can go ahead and introduce the activity with some of this script language or you can adapt them into your own words. Invite participants to take two to three minutes to fill out their identities for the categories listed on the personal identity wheel. In their packet, this will look like this. You're gonna instruct participants to fill out as many spokes of the wheel as they'd like, putting their most salient or important identities on the inner spokes of the wheel, and their less salient but still present identities on the outer spokes of the wheel. It can sometimes be helpful to give an example from your own life to make this clear to participants. For instance, I might share with participants that 
Playing the guitar is a really important hobby to me, and it would go on the inner spoke of the wheel. Um, whereas rooting for the Atlanta Braves is less of an important identity for me, so that one would go on the outer spoke of the wheel. Give participants two or three minutes to fill out the personal identity wheel. Then break them into pairs, encourage them to find someone they don't know already, and ask them to share two of their personal identities with their partners. They should only spend about two to three minutes doing this. You can then wrap up the personal identities with the script language and move the participants along to the social identity wheel with the script language. Invite participants to take two or three minutes to fill out their social identity wheel, which is the wheel on the next page of their packet. Again, putting their most salient identities on the inner spokes and their less salient identities on the outer spokes. Again, if you can use yourself as an example and share some of your identities from the wheel, that's very helpful. We also find that some participants get confused about the difference between race, nationality, and ethnicity. So again, using yourself as an example will be helpful for that. For me, I like to share that my race is white, my ethnicity is Irish and Portuguese, and my national origin is that I was born in the United States. After participants have taken two to three minutes to fill out their social identity wheel, we don't go back into pairs. Instead, we discuss the social identities as a full group using these questions as a guide. Start with this question, which aspects of your social identity feel especially meaningful to you and why? This can easily take up a full five minutes of discussion, but if you need other questions, you can move on and ask these. One good teaching tip is to wait 10 full seconds before you ask a follow-up question. So ask this question and then count to 10 Mississippi in your head before you move on to any other questions. Usually you'll find that if you wait long enough, someone will join into the conversation. After you've discussed these identities for about five minutes, you can wrap up the activity using this language and then move on to the next activity. The next activity is exploring socialization and messages about queer people. In your participants handouts, pa handout packet, it'll look like this, a grid called Things I Learned Growing Up. You can introduce this handout using some of this script language or adapt it to your own personality and your own way of explaining things. Give participants five minutes to fill out the boxes on their grid with information they learned about queer people from the various sources listed. Again, it's helpful if you can use yourself as an example. So you would say, this first box, we're gonna fill out what you learned about asexual people from your family. And if that's nothing, you leave the box blank. You might have learned something positive about bisexual people from your religion, and then you put that in this box. You might have learned something negative about trans people from your friends, and you put that in this box. Give participants five minutes to fill out as many of those boxes as they get a chance to do, and then ask them to wrap things up and engage them in dialogue. I like to tell participants, it's okay if you didn't fill out the whole box. We're just gonna talk about the ones you did get to. Now participants on their sheet at the bottom of the sheet, have a list of questions for reflection. <clears throat> There's almost no chance you'll make it through all of these questions for reflection, and it's perfectly okay if you spend the entire time discussing just one question. Follow what participants seem most interested in and ask them the questions that you know bring out the best and, and bring out the most robust discussion. Sometimes simply asking participants what they noticed as they fill out their boxes is enough, and people will share both the negative and positive or non-existent uh, information about queer folks that they learned from these sources. You can take about um, 10 minutes to discuss uh, to discuss the uh, the boxes and then wrap up the activity using this language here in the script or adapt it to your own personality. Next in the packet participants have a survey called things I still believe today. This is basically a um, homophobia or biphobia or transphobia scale for participants to see if they're still feeling any um, negative feelings toward queer people today. We do not do this activity with participants during the Brave Space training, but we provide it to our participants as a resource should they be interested in further engaging with it outside of the training. So you can point it out to participants and tell them just that. We're not going to be doing this exercise together, but I encourage you to do it on your own time. Now the participants have had a chance to kind of get to know each other a little bit and talk about themselves and their own personal identities and personal experiences with the LGBTQIA community, we move on to a really fun terminology matching game that they'll do with uh, a partner or two 
and uh, that is meant to help them learn more about LGBTQIA terminology. You can introduce the activity with this language and then break participants up into groups of two to four people. You're going to instruct participants that they are to match the terms in their envelope to the corresponding definitions. The color of the note cards have no relation to one another and the terms are not color coded. Inform participants that they have 10 minutes to complete this activity. Participants will want to break off into separate areas of the room, maybe spread out a little bit, and then you can pass around envelopes of cards. Those are being provided to you in your Brave Space box or bin. And let participants work on the activity. Walk around, answer questions, engage groups in discussion as they struggle, <laughs> um, laugh about it together. And when a group has finished matching their terms and definitions, encourage them to check their answers using the answer key in their packet. After about 10 minutes, bring the group back together and review their questions as well as the key terms listed below. Um, you've got a bunch of resources that participants have been given in their handout that can help you explain terminology. In addition to the um, answer key that the participants have in their packet, which includes all the terms and their definitions, participants also have the gender fox which is a really handy uh, diagram created by Regis alum Malia Olson for us that separates out the difference between gender identity, expression, sex, physical attraction, and emotional attraction. And so you can use this to kind of break down terms for participants if they're struggling. You can also use this image of the LGBTQ acronym and how queer serves as an umbrella term for the acronym LGBT with LGB applying to sexualities and T applying to genders. You also have in your, in your packet, and all the participants will have in their packets, a list of LGBTQ inclusive language do's and don'ts that we say intersex and not hermaphrodite, that we say gay and not homosexual, assigned female at birth and not born female. So feel free to use these uh, resources to explain terms to your participants as they ask questions after the terminology game, or you can just point out to participants that they have these great resources to look at on their own time. We hope that after the terminology game, after you've kind of unpacked questions that participants have, that you can also just make sure to hit on these really important key terms to cover in discussion. The fact that queer used to be a slur, but now is used as an umbrella term to describe anyone who doesn't identify as straight or cis. That we don't like using queer as a noun, like she's a queer, but we do like using it as an adjective, a member of the queer community. We want to distinguish for people between transgender, transvestite, transsexual, and transgendered, and that we don't use any of those last three terms. We want to define cisgender and cisnormativity, clarify that we say intersex and not hermaphrodite, clarify that the term homosexual is really out of use now and contains with it stigmatizing uh, medical history, and clarify the difference between pan and bi. We also like to clarify the terms gender non-binary versus androgynous, that androgynous is a gender expression term, whereas gender non-binary is a gender identity term, and that gender queer might be an alternative to gender non-binary. Feel free to ask participants what their own experience with these terms is and engage in a discussion. This can be a really lively part of the training. And if participants seem really stuck or really confused about any terms, encourage them to go and Google those terms themselves and learn more about all of these really beautiful, rich identities. Sometimes I like to emphasize to participants that terminology is not meant to be prescriptive. It's meant to be descriptive. So we never assume someone's terms. We don't see someone dating a person who identifies as a man one week and a person who identifies as a woman the next week and say, oh, they're, they're bisexual. They might identify as pan, or queer, or lesbian, or gay, or straight. We don't know how they identify based on their behavior. And so people get to choose their own terms, and this is an empowering, beautiful, um, fluid, creative process. And it's one of the things the queer community is most proud of, is all of our wonderful, inclusive terminology. We don't use terms to keep people in boxes. We use terms for people to find themselves and describe themselves in a way that's joyful and empowering. So I like to emphasize that to participants, especially if they seem really anxious about getting all the terms right. You don't need to know what the term means if you just ask someone, what are your terms? You can go and Google it later. So that's the terminology matching game. 
And after that game, people are kind of in a really fun mood. They've been having a lot of fun playing this game. And we now reach the sort of emotional, um, emotional climax of the Brave Space training, the most difficult emotional part of the training. And this is the coming out stars, which is meant to allow participants to learn about the coming out process and experience in some kind of virtual vicarious way the varied responses that queer people might face when coming out and being out. That includes um, both the joys and the sorrows and challenges of that experience. So you're going to reach into your Brave Space bin or box and pull out the stars. You should have stars pre-cut and ready to go. And pass them around to the group. If you're familiar with your participants, you should think carefully about who chooses the green star, because this is going to be the most challenging of the coming out experience. If you know from um, either your own personal experience with the people in the training, or from anything that people have disclosed up to this point of the training, that someone is queer, please do not give them the green star. If you know that any member of your group, either from your own personal knowledge of the group or from something they've disclosed already, is struggling with mental health, suicide, or someone close to them um, dealing with mental health and suicide, don't give them the green star. We give the green star to people who um, have the most to learn and the farthest to grow in their inclusivity of the queer community. Um, and not to people who would be especially vulnerable to the challenges that come with the green star. So ask participants to um, take their star and take a pen and then to gather together in a circle with their shoulders touching or almost touching. You can then read this part of the script. I like to stick to the script really strictly during the coming out stars um, because the script is really loaded full of great data and important points. Um, the script also includes a trigger warning here that mentions that if you feel challenged, overly challenged by this activity and you need to leave the room, and get some air, um, you're absolutely free to do that. You can also skip the activity entirely if you'd rather leave the room now. So make sure to read this trigger warming and then instruct your participants in how to fill out the star. They're going to fill out on each point of the star a different aspect of their world. Put their name in the center of the star and then on each point of the star write the name of a very best friend, a group they belong to, a family member, a profession that they'd like to have or that they currently have, and on the last point of the star some dreams that they have. After they've finished uh, filling out the star, they can put their pens or pencils away, and you can start reading through the script. Now, it's best if you can, at this point in the training, decide between you and your um, co-trainer who's going to read the script and who's going to sort of um, either participate in the, in the coming out stars themselves or keep an eye on who's exiting and entering the room. I recommend having one person read the script and the other person either stand in the circle with the star themselves or sort of stand off to the side and keep an eye on people's emotions and follow anyone out of the room to check on them if they need to leave the room. If you are a straight cisgender trainer, then I recommend asking your queer counterpart which, uh, which element they would rather do that day. They might be more in the mood that day to read the script or they might be in the more in the mood that day to keep an eye on things. So defer to your queer um, co-trainer if one of you is not queer. Whoever's reading the script will then read through the script and you're going to be instructing people to fold back or tear off points of their stars. You'll notice throughout the training that people will start having emotional reactions. They might um, laugh out of nervousness. They might get really sad and cry. Um, they might be really disturbed. They will almost certainly be very silent during this activity. Just read slowly and keep your eye on, um, on everybody and um, read through the script and keep going with all the instructions. At the very end of the training, uh, excuse me, at the very end of this exercise, the coming out stars, you're going to be instructing everyone with a green star to tear their star to pieces and drop those pieces to the ground. You'll then read this final part of the script about the remaining purple, blue, and red stars. And then you're going to ask the participants to please look around the circle and see how, for many, their life is in pieces. Lasting less than 10 minutes, excuse me, less than five minutes, no more than five minutes, the trainer should ask the group to respond to the following. Does anyone want to discuss how they feel? Would anyone like to provide some thoughts or comments? Usually it's going to be very quiet and you might have people openly weeping at this point. Remember that that's okay. We want them to feel something. We want them to learn something and experience some of this discomfort. Even if participants are themselves queer, we want them to develop empathy for other queer coming out experiences that are different than, them, than their own. So as a lesbian, I need to do this activity and imagine it from the perspective of someone who's trans or someone who's ace 
or someone who holds a queer identity that's different from mine. So it's good and it's a learning experience if someone's crying. We just want to follow up with them maybe during the break and check in and see how they're doing and make sure they're okay. At this point though, you can just ask people how they feel. If, if you count to 10 Mississippi and no one's talking, then invite the, um, the Blue Star people to start. They've had the best coming out experience. So say, Blue Star people, how are you feeling? And then you can ask Green Star people, how are you feeling? Purple Star people, how are you feeling? After five minutes, please read the following closing statement. I would read this word for word. And you're gonna instruct people to help the Green Star folks pick up their pieces. Okay, so this is the most healing moment of the activity because folks like get to reach out to those who have, um, who have died by suicide and help them pick up the pieces. Okay. After the training's over, um, it's gonna be time for a break. So you can let your participants know that they're free to go to the bathroom, get something to drink, get something to eat, come back in five minutes. You can also advise participants that they're welcome to either keep their stars, throw their stars away, or give them to you, the trainers, to humanely dispose of them, since some participants will feel uncomfortable throwing their own stars away. It feels like you're throwing your life away and they might feel weird about that. At this point, folks will go and get their break because they, um, they've just done an emotionally um, you know, challenging experience. So they'll go and take a break. While they're gone, you're going to start setting up the room for the panel. Your panelists, it could be three or four faculty, staff, and students who identify as queer at Regis, will have arrived to your room during the coming out stars. So please go outside and greet them and welcome them and thank them profusely for giving their time to panel for Brave Space. You then wanna set up the room so that you have um, three or four chairs at the front of the room for your panelists and your moderator. Either trainer can serve as the moderator. Sometimes I think it's pretty cool for the queer uh, co-trainer, if, if you have one queer and one not queer uh, trainers, to serve as the moderator. So it's all queer people talking to other queer people. But if you're the queer uh, co-leader uh, and you're only one of two, then you might be kind of exhausted by the STARS activity and you want your, uh, your ally trainer to take over. That's fine. Whatever you decide to do is great. So set up the panel, greet the panelists, um, assuage their nerves. Sometimes panelists come in a little bit nervous about having to panel that day. So tell them they're gonna be great. Ask them if they're nervous at all. Make them feel welcome. Encourage them to make themselves comfortable. And then after all of your participants have arrived back in the room, you're gonna start the panel. The panel lasts for 30 minutes. If you are the moderator of the panel, you're start, you'll start by introducing the panelists using this script language. Invite each panelist to introduce themselves with their name, pronouns, year in school, um, major or what office they're in if they're faculty staff, and what identity terms they use to describe their gender and sexuality. You can then also give them a sort of warm-up question like, an issue affecting the LGBTQIA plus community that they're passionate about, or an experience they've had at Regis that the audience could ask follow-up questions about. After you've asked that warm-up question and given the panelists time to introduce themselves, now you open the floor to the audience for their questions. Again, count to 10 Mississippi before you jump in and, follow and give follow-up questions. The audience will almost always ask the same questions every time. What can I do as an ally to help you feel better? Um, what is great and bad about Regis and its queer community and how we treat queer people here? What's it like to be queer at a Catholic school? If the questions are slow and you're not getting many from the audience, you're welcome to ask some of these questions of the panelists as the moderator. Keep in mind that um, the audience members might ask questions using language that isn't perfect or isn't expert level language yet, so feel free to rephrase questions for your panelists. After 30 minutes, You'll wrap things up and say, thank you so much, panelists. Thank you, audience. And then you'll say, this is the end of the panel, and the panelists can leave. When the panelists get up to leave, we ask that one of the two co-trainers walk them out and chat with them in the hallway a little bit as they leave. So if you're the trainer who walks the panelists out, please join them in the hallway and thank them profusely again for being on the panel and send them on their way. Tell them they were amazing. Tell them they did a great job. If you're the, if you're the trainer who stays in the room after the panel, and does not walk the panelists out, you will then move on to the final activity, which is the case scenario discussion. This is a 20 minute exercise and involves envelopes full of case scenarios that will be included in your Brave Space bin or box. You can transition into this activity with this script language that introduces it. You're gonna ask participants to get into small groups of three or four, and then you can pass out scenarios to them. So you'll have an envelope full of case scenarios 
We have case scenarios for students, for faculty, and for staff. If you have a mixed group, try to have them divide themselves up into smaller groups based on their role, staff, faculty, or students. And then pass out the appropriate scenarios and allow them time to work on those together and talk through them together. If a group finishes one of their scenarios, give them another one, a different one. And as you visit groups to kind of check on their progress and talk to them, encourage them to clarify the problem, identify options, weigh the outcomes, and talk through how to implement the decided upon direction. In other words, if they say, I would talk to my coworker and tell him he's being homophobic, ask them, what would you say? Would you do it in an email or would you do it after a department meeting? What words would you use? How would you break the ice? How would you introduce this idea? Ask folks to be as specific as possible in planning out how they would respond to each of these case scenarios. After about 10 minutes, you can bring everyone together and have them share out some of their most uh, challenging scenarios that they encountered and what they decided to do about them. Go group by group and discuss as many scenarios as you have time to and talk together about whether groups uh, would approach the this, this same scenario different ways, whether they had different ideas. We want to really emphasize here that allyship and stepping in when something's going wrong might look different to different people depending on their roles, their positions of power, privilege and oppression on campus, and their personalities. So some folks might have no problems calling someone out or calling someone in, whereas other folks might want to try a more um, subtle approach or they might want to try filing an anonymous bias incident report. We want to emphasize to people that they can rely on many different resources at Regis when they're encountering any of these case scenarios. So encourage participants to think about who they would reach out to, OCPD, the Queer Resource Alliance, the Queer Student Alliance, housing, HR, who might you reach out to so that you're not tackling this problem alone? You're welcome to read through any of these case scenarios before you jump into your first Brave Space training to get a sense of what they are. These are all real situations that have happened on Regis um, in the last 10 years. And so they, um, they are very much coming out of actual queer people's experiences here at Regis. After the case scenario, you'll be moving into the final 15 minutes of your three-hour Brave Space training. The final 15 minutes are spent going over what we learned and how we want to apply it in an informal discussion together as a group. So take about five minutes to lead participants through some of these questions. You won't have time to get through all of them, but if you can just cover with them, what do you want to put into action that you learned today? Or what are you finding useful from today? Just talk about it for about five minutes and see how folks are feeling. After that discussion, you can move into this script. This script outlines what the placard means, the little triangle that they get at the end of the training, and what we want them to do about it. In their packet, they have this ally pledge. We want them to sign this pledge if they're planning to hang up their Brave Space Triangle outside their office door. We don't want to collect this from them. You do not need to collect, collect this from them. We want participants to keep this handout to remind them of the pledge that they're taking. We also don't want anyone to sign this pledge if they don't mean it or if they don't feel ready to yet. So please encourage participants to only sign this pledge if they feel ready to commit to what it says. Read the bullet points out loud with them and go through what all of this means for about five minutes and invite them, if they're gonna hang up the Brave Space Triangle outside their office door, to go ahead and sign this and keep it. If they're not ready to sign it and they're not ready to take a Brave Space Triangle or hang it up yet, that's more than fine. They can come to another Brave Space training or keep educating themselves until they feel ready. So after you've read aloud the pledge and invited participants to sign it if they're ready, you can wrap it up with this very final statement here, which invites participants to fill out evaluations. These are mandatory. We really want participants to fill out the evaluation. It's the very last page in their packet. So please collect one of these from every participant and then bring it to the psych and neuro office for our um, work studies to, um, or sorry, put it in the Brave Space bin and bring the bin back to ODEIE, and at which point psych and neuro will eventually uh, code the information for us. So collect one of these from every participant and put them in the Brave Space bin. The last sheet that participants have in their packet is that they have this ally contact information form. If they want to fill it out, they're more than welcome to, and we can hold on to their contact information or um, recruit them for a future panel themselves, but this is optional. You can also point out to participants that they have a whole heap of additional resources in the back of their packet, and those are for them to use in any of their roles at Regis um, anytime they need to. 
So at that point, you can thank participants for coming, thank them for filling out the evaluation, and send them on their merry way. Participants are invited to take a Brave Space logo, placard, triangle sticker um, if they want them and feel ready for them. We don't want to put people into a position where they have to out themselves as not being ready, though. So please don't distribute these by saying, raise your hand if you want them. Please don't distribute these by passing them around the circle and forcing someone to take one or not take one and out themselves as being ready or not ready. Instead, I like to put a stack of them on the back desk near the door on the way out and say to folks, pick up one of these on your way out if you signed the pledge and you're ready to hang it up on your door. If not, no worries and no pressure. We want to make sure people only take one triangle sticker, triangle logo, um, and that they only hang it outside their own office door and not a group office door, not a um, suite. And all of this is in the um, instructions here. Okay. So those are all the tips that I have for you today, and I hope that this um, Train the Trainer video has been helpful. I thank you so much again for taking the time to uh, become a Brave Space Trainer, and we look forward to seeing you at a Brave Space Training soon. Thank you again.